So yoga for runners is really important because we can injury proof your running. If we do yoga, we can work on how well your body moves, we can improve how well your joints function, we can improve your range of motion and the strength for those range of motion. We can also in in increase your recovery, how well your body recovers, which will ultimately help you be able to run more and run better. So we're gonna start with this practice, this yoga for runners practice by bringing your hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, and we're gonna go for a few rounds of cat-cow. So from here, we're gonna work through our spine. So pressing your belly to the floor and bringing your chin up nice and slowly. And as we do that, we're breathing in. And as we're breathing out, we're rounding through your back and put your chin onto your chest. And arch your back as much as you can. And you just work through this now a few times and you own inhale and exhale. Keep breathing in, pressing your belly to the floor, breathing out, rounding through your back, chin to your chest. And think about articulating the, as many of those vertebrae as you can. So you've got all of those vertebrae with the discs in between the vertebrae. And the more you can move them, the healthier they stay. They get more liquid, they get more fluid into them. Our modern day life is not very good for our back. So all that sitting that we do, we need to counteract it. We need to injury proof your body. Look after it, keep it healthy, supple. Physical activity helps the body stay strong and physically resilient. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck our toes under and we're gonna slowly work our way into a downward facing dog. So pushing your knees up off the floor gently, keep your knees bent to start. We're gonna push your head towards your knees so that you're starting to push into the palms of the hands. And let's take a bit of a stretch slowly into the left heel. So straighten the left leg, push the weight into the left heel, keep the right knee bent, just notice how that feels. And then slowly go over to the right. Notice how that one feels. Bend the left knee. And we're just slowly pedaling through that. So left and right, you continue to do that in your own inhale and exhale. If you get dizzy or lightheaded, come to your knees at any point. But this is really good for those Achilles, into the calf muscles, up into the hamstrings. So it keeps those legs all the way down the back, that posterior chain, nice and supple. And we use those the Achilles and the calf and the hamstrings lots as we run, so we keep these muscles supple. It's going to really help our running and again help us injury proof our running. We're just going to continue to breathe in and out as we do this. Okay, if at any point your body needs a rest or you don't feel like your body can achieve the same shape as what my shape looks like, you listen to your body, feel your body, and respond to what your body feels like. So don't follow me blindly. So from here, we're going to create a bit of intensity and strength. So we're going to push both heels towards the floor, and we're going to lift the left foot off the floor. Wherever that wants to come up, open up the left hip, and then from here, we're going to bring your head over your hands and step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. And then wiggle the foot onto the inside of the left hand. And then from here, nice and strong into this front foot and this front thigh, you're going to push yourself up into a high lunge position. And just check that that feels okay for the hips. Allow the hips to sink, have a little bit of a wiggle. Make sure we're pushing down for that big toe at the front foot. Make sure this thigh, this left thigh and left bum are active, nice and strong. And then we're going to bring the hands into a cradle and lift the fingertips up. And just create a little bit of a stretch through the ribs. So not excessively again. Feel your body and respond to it. Notice how it wants to move, how it wants to be. Don't excessively stretch it. Make sure the lower back feels safe. We're pushing that back heel backwards. We're creating strength and stretching the body here. Breathing into the belly button. Maybe a little bit of a back bend. If your chin doesn't like it, bring your chin to your chest. Keep breathing. One more breath in. As we breathe out from here, we're gonna bring the back heel down, your back foot's on an angle, and we're gonna float the left hand forwards and the right hand back. And just settle into the, into the ribs, settle into the shoulders, relax the shoulders, and we're pushing the outer edge of that back foot, the right foot, into the floor. Really pushing it in and push down that right big toe. So this shape, Warrior Two here, is really good for countering act, counteracting plantar fasciitis if we're pushing down through that back big toe because we're really activating that big toe muscle, strengthening the arch of the foot, make sure we're pushing down through that front big toe as well. 
So as well as the thighs getting the benefit, the bum's getting the benefit, the inner thighs are getting strengthened and stretched at the same time. We're really helping the feet out here. So keep breathing, focusing your gaze over that front hand. And just have a little bit of a wiggle if it gets too intense at any point. We're going to move into a balanced shape. It's going to challenge you at the moment, but also really good for runners, for our hip flexor area, our thighs, but also running is a single leg balance exercise. So we're going to practice balancing on one leg. But how is this shape feeling for you right now? Okay. If you do like this practice, give it a like, leave me a comment, let me know how you felt with it. And if you're not subscribed, do subscribe to the channel. All ways that you can support and help my channel grow, help the community that I'm just trying to grow, grow as well. Okay, so from here, we're gonna bring the hands down and step that back foot to meet the front foot at the top of your mat. So left foot into the floor, keep that left knee bent. We're gonna place your left hand reaching forwards. If you need to use a wall or chair to balance on, you can do that. Step one, we're reaching the right hand back to catch the right foot. We can go in step by step by step and we can always go back a step if we go too far. Step two, hover the right foot off the floor or maybe go step three. If you need to go back a step at any point, go back a step. Step four, reach that left hand forwards and the right foot back. Step five, we can push the foot and the hand away from the body. You might feel that stretch at the top of the right thigh and the right hip area. And you might feel that work on the left thigh Left knee bent, sorry, so we're working into the left thigh and left bum area. Keep breathing, really pushing down through that left big toe. Smile and welcome the challenge if you keep falling out of it. Again, don't judge your body against mine. I've been practicing for almost 13 years now, so I might have a head start on you. Just work on your body, work on your balance and accept that you are doing the work on it. You're going to strengthen it. One more breath in. And then slowly come back to standing, nice and tall. Bring that foot down, have a little bit of a wiggle, adjust for that work. Notice how it felt. So you've got one side obviously stretched and strengthened more than the other. And then from here, we're going to take a nice big inhale. As we exhale, we're going to bend the knees and send the hips backwards and come all the way down with the hands to the floor. And then from here, we're going to step one foot back and then the other, and we're going to push our way back into down facing dog again. Have a little bit of a pedal and press. And then from here, this time, we're going to go to the right side with that sequence. So we're going to push the left heel into the floor, bring the right foot up off the floor, start to open up that right hip wherever you feel comfortable with that right foot up into the air. Then slowly step that right foot to the outside of the right hand. Give the foot a little wiggle onto the inside now of this right hand. Get strong and connected with that big toe and the ball of the big toe. And then from here, keeping the hips facing forwards, we're going to push strongly into that high lunge position. If this feels like it's too much of a stretch, you can always hop that back foot closer to the front foot. You want the hips to sink a little bit. Should be feeling a stretch at the top of the left thigh area. Push that heel back. And then take your hands into that cradle. Fingertips up towards the sky, open up through the ribs. Maybe a little bit of a back bend. If your back doesn't like it, if it feels like it's pinching and it's changing your voice, come forwards. Don't look at the screen and try to replicate my shape. You feel your shape. So if it doesn't look like this, that's absolutely fine. As long as you're feeling a stretch at the top of the left of the left thigh, feeling stretch through the ribs, maybe a bit of heat and strength in that front thigh. Your chin can always come down if the neck doesn't like it. Keep breathing. So again, we're trying to work on injury proof in your body rather than cause it in, causing it any more injury. And one more breath in. As you breathe out, bring your back heel down. Your back foot is on an angle. Again, we're pushing into the outer edge of the foot. Open the arms into that warrior two shape. So right arm over the right foot, left arm over the left foot, roughly. Settle into the ribs, into the shoulders, focus your gaze forwards. So again, really important that we're pushing down through the big toe to activate that big toe muscle and the arch of the foot, the back foot, and really connecting that big toe at the front. Again, that's gonna help avoid 
plantar fasciitis for us runners, strengthen the arch, the feet, make it more resilient and springy, able to absorb the shock of running every single step we take. How does this sad feel in this shape for you? Again, nice little movement, just settle into it, be okay with the shape. One more breath in. As you breathe out, just bring the hands down. We're gonna hop that back foot up towards the front foot. And again, we're gonna go into our balanced shape. So right hand forwards, step by step. Again, go back a step if it feels too much. Both sides will be different. Step one, left hand back, left foot here. Step two, left foot starts to hover. Step three, left foot into the left hand. Step four, reach the hand. I'm gonna to have to come away back. I'm gonna go into the window. Step four, reach the hand forwards, left knee back. Step five, push the foot and the knee away as you reach. Your hand forwards, look towards, just past the fingertips, pick something that's stationary, keep breathing. Again, a slight bend in that standing knee. You'll feel that work into the thigh and the hip flexors on the left side. Again, creating that mobility, easing out any stiffness from our modern day sitting that we do, helping our running, because the hip flexion in the knee drive is important for our runners, important for us as runners. And if you're liking this practice, give it a, a like, a thumbs up, leave a comment at the end maybe. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. One more breath in. And as you breathe out, stand nice and tall. And then from here, bring the foot down. Have a little bit of a shake and a wiggle. And just notice how that feels. So again, you feel the left and the right side. You should feel a lot going on there. Have a little bit of a shake. And we're gonna create a lot of strength in the thighs now. So, and again, single leg balance, it's really important to strengthen our single leg balance as runners. Running is hopping from one leg to the other, balancing on one leg. So if we can improve that strength and stability in those muscles, we are ultimately gonna run better. So we're gonna place the left foot into the middle of the thigh, uh, into the middle of the thigh, into the middle of the mat. Make a good connection with that big toe. And then from here, we're gonna place the, the hands, on, sorry, hands into the heart and bring the right foot up off the floor. This is step one. Step two, place the right ankle area onto the left thigh and start to send the hips backwards. Step three, you can go a little bit deeper, maybe bring those elbows towards the knee and the foot. Again, send the hips backwards, keep breathing, focus your gaze to a point on the floor in front. Welcome the heat and the challenge in this balance, try and keep your hips stable. Pushing down through that left big toe, strengthening the arch of the foot and the big toe muscle. Breathing in and out through the nose. How is this shape feeling? Again, if you're wobbling and falling, don't judge your body against mine. Just keep coming back into it, strengthening every time you practice. Well done, one more breath in. As you breathe out, standing nice and tall. Ooh, I got a good burn on there. How was that for you? And glutes and thighs was burning. Okay, give the leg a little shake. We're gonna go into the other side. So from here, we're gonna place the right foot into the middle of the mat. Just gonna have a little bit of a bent knee on that right side. Heel comes up on the left, and then from hands into the heart. From here, bend the right knee, and hover the left foot, that's step one. Step two, you could go ankle area to the thigh, sit down slightly, bending that right knee. Or step three, you could go all the way, elbows almost touch this balancing thigh at the front, keep breathing, keep your spine relatively straight and strong, keep looking towards the floor about a metre in front, push down strongly through that big toe, activate the big toe muscle on the arch of the foot, again I've said it a lot but it helps avoid plantar fasciitis and lower leg issues, shin splints, calf issues, get those nice supporting muscles nice and strong and stable, Again, don't judge your body if you're wobbling and falling, it's okay, keep breathing. I'm feeling the heat, almost there. And then slowly standing up, and whoa, there's a good burn. 
have a little bit of a wiggle. How was that for you on that side? One side was a little bit stronger for me. My right is always a bit stronger because I'm dominant on that side. So just have a little bit of a wiggle, have a little bit of a shake, just have a little bit of a bounce. Shake that heat and tension out. We've created a lot of stress and tension in the body, but good stress that the body will adapt to and it will help you be injury proof because we're really strengthening. So don't forget to keep on with your mobility, your strength and your recovery work so that you're running and you're training smarter. You don't have to run harder. You don't have to train harder. You just have to run and train smarter. So if you've enjoyed this practice, give it a like, leave a comment, let me know how it feels in your body. What did you enjoy? Did it feel good? Did you, was you able to balance for as long? Give it a subscribe, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And let me know what videos you would like to see. I'm gonna to continue to post these strength, recovery, and mobility videos so that it will help you run better. So thank you for being a part of my community and my channel.